what you are the you're not even a part of the circle come on now you're not even in the circle yeah, mika lion claxton that's what you are mm -hmm. mika lion claxton i said it and i should call you tammy hood red roman mm -hmm. but you's a non-factor chick that's what you are you's a non-factor i got t-shirts too here to go here to go two t-shirts you know one for you and you are here to go thank you so much when i talk to my dad i was definitely you know it was, where did you get your earrings from girl my earrings are custom come on girl these are custom earrings because they can't security they can't it's ridiculous let's go yeah this is an more j couture exclusive if it's hot i'll say it's hot but if it's a mess baby To it now I'm gonna start with each person that was on the panel because the, the reunion just pretty much passed it was on part one and part two is coming up so I just want to go ahead and just jump right into this well, let me pick a girl <sighs> yeah notice I didn't say a, a lady let me pick a, a girl for you let's start with Evelyn to me Evelyn looks better crying that's the only time I can actually see beauty in Evelyn is when she's crying because when Evelyn opens her mouth to speak my God, you think you're talking to somebody at a truck stop or you're talking to some, some I don't know, some prostitute from three that's been working for 16 years on the block that's known every John that's walked past because Evelyn has the most filthiest mouth on the show. Her mouth, to me, needs to be duct taped. It needs to be censored. Evelyn, to me, is contrived. Evelyn is phony. She's fake. She she has a certain air about her that I don't even know why it's there in the first place. I mean, she always wants to call somebody a non-factor. You're the non-factor chick, right? But Evelyn, before the show, who were you? Who knew you? Did you have a business? Did you have any type of organization that anyone could recognize you off of rather than just basketball wives? Really? But yet, you want to call everybody a non-factor chick. No, sweetheart, you got that non-factor chick from a reflection of yourself because that's how you feel about your own self. You're the non-factor chick. Without the show Basketball Wives and you spinning off to your own drama and mess for some other show that you might just possibly have in the future, you wouldn't be any relevant either. So you want to pick out and call everybody else a non-factor chick, which is a pretty funny phrase, I will say that. But yet, what have you done before the show? Then let's go on, you know, with this whole season, I'm just going to talk about a lot of, I'm going to be all over the place with basketball wives, there's really no general angle where I'm coming from, we're just going to go on. This person truly annoyed me throughout the entire show, I honestly believe that this person really did star 95% of the drama on the show, but yet, the ladies were so Stupid that no one can, I, and, I, and, and, and even if they did see her doing all of this, no one brought it to the forefront how they should have. Because if I was on the show, I would have brought it to the forefront. Do you know what I'm talking about? Come on. No, it's not her. It's, it's, not, the, it's not the puppet master. We're going to talk about the puppet master later on. It was Susie. Yes, the, the, the young, freshborn giraffe. Susie, to me, was a mess this season. Like, Susie, to me, reminded me of an eighth grader. Because why does she feel that every time someone discloses something to her, that she has to go run and tell anybody? You're starting all the drama on the show. So rather than anybody, rather than Tammy popping and hitting Mika, rather than Evelyn and Tammy fighting, rather than Jen and, and Royce fighting, whoever, why wasn't anybody confronting Susie? Susie. Would you, I would appreciate if you better not, if, if you don't even tell me. If I'm not friends with this person, don't tell me your discussions. I could care less. I'm a grown woman. I could care less what you and this other person talking about. As long as me and you are good right now, then I don't need to hear anything else. If this person wants to say something to me, have them come to me and say it. I do not need you to play USPS and deliver everybody's messages to me. Susie, De Susie started all the drama on the show. Let's just be clear about it. Besides the whole Twittering things with the exes and all that crap, 
we really did start all the drama. I mean, if you really think about it, every argument always resorted back to Susie being back in the middle. So what's up with Susie getting balls this reunion? I mean, Susie really got confident this season. I mean, she felt like she was down this season. She felt like the girls really did love her, that she really didn't have a friend this season. So all of a sudden, you know, she's going more cussing now on the show. She got talking about more sex now, and she's really trying to be an end girl. But this is my thing, and I want to bring this back to Evelyn. You ladies keep mentioning a circle. Grown women don't fight over being a part of a circle. See, a real woman creates her own circle. She creates her own. She creates her own. So I don't understand why everybody keeps talking about, you want to be in our circle. You're not even in the circle, boo-boo. What? We're not in 8th grade. The only people that talk about circles are women of 50 that are in a social club or 8th graders. What other circle could you possibly be talking about? And if you want to talk to me, the TV to be clocked and just go ahead and talk about this. First of all, I mean, what do any of you women do? None of you own, own, own any organizations. And if we dare say Tammy's organization, let's not even go there. That's a joke. Because Tammy didn't even do anything for her charity this season. So let's just forget that out the way. I mean, she didn't even have a charity function. Hello, girl. So anyway, I'm not understanding why our women fighting so hard to be a part of what circle? To be a, a part of a circle with messy females? To be a part of a circle where women can't even get along with each other? To be a part of a backstabbing, immature, uh, jabuconizing, hood red porch monkey circle? Really? Should you really want to be a part of that? Like Mika said, like looking at that circle, come on now. Let's talk about Royce. Now, I'll be honest with you. I really wasn't feeling, I know, this is my opinion about Royce. When I first saw the show, Royce, to me, I didn't hate her, but I wasn't in love with her. Royce was just like a girl, if I was in high school, which this show reminds me of, I would clearly just walk by her in the hallways and probably wave because she would like my style, but I really wouldn't have too much far conversation with her. But I have to say that I grew at the reunion to instantly love Royce because I found that Royce was honest. I found that Royce spoke up for what she believes in. I felt that Royce, you know, she stood up to people that nobody was stood up to. She stood up to the puppet master, a.k.a. Shawnee. She stood up to Evelyn. Tammy, if this is really your personality off of the show, I really advise that you seek counseling because beyond the ha ha ki ki, I really think that you have a lot of anger management issues that you need to address and you also need to address the issue of your consumption of alcohol because clearly I think you get a lot of alcohol carriage that you just totally just make a mess of yourself. Now, let me just go ahead and talk about Mika. Wow. You know what? I'm like this with Mika because I'll be on I'll be some a little bit honest with Tammy and say that she did give Tammy plenty of opportunity. Well, Tammy did give Mika plenty of opportunities to say what she had to say and things right there in front of Tammy, but I kind of think that Mika wanted to play the cordial role as to just kind of not giving her her real opinion, but kind of giving her that, oh, you, you cool, you kind of, you, you, you cool, you this and that, whatever. But I felt that Mika did go about it the wrong way as she entered the show because she entered the show in an eighth grade way as well, trying to see which side she wanted to be on. And I feel that you didn't need to do that. Just go on the show, like Tammy said, be yourself. Who cares if you're on Evelyn's squad? Who cares if you're on the Susie voice squad? Just do you, boo. Like, there is... What side would you want to be on? I mean, clearly, none of them are elite if you want to know the real tea. But just be yourself. I thought that you were trying really hard to be on this side or on that side. As to where sometimes... Not condoning violence, but I understand why you got the drunk Tammy so upset as to where she did hit you. Because it was like you were just all over the place with that. Just do you. Bam. Prime example. Let's talk about the Puppet Master. If anybody notices, if you watch the reunion, Shawnee didn't say a word. And if I'm wrong, you can sit there and clock me. But she sat there with that curry hose that flipped the whole time in her head and sat there and just snickered and grinned like three old white ladies watching three old black women fight and argue in the park. Shawnee did not say anything. Shawnee just sat there and played her strings. 
Hello, play the strings exactly how she orchestrated it. Shawnee, to me, wants to play the whole role of mature, wants to play the role of, you know, this is a, you, as woman, I am truly shocked that, that they were fighting like this. I couldn't believe they did that. Like, you know, she, she did this little nose thing. I, I couldn't believe, I couldn't do, do the nose thing, but she does this little rat face that just, just irks me. But she played this whole little role that she was shocked about anything that popped off. And so when Tammy and Mika started fighting, she was shocked. When Jen and, and Royce got that, she, she was shocked. How can you be shocked that you set it up, Miss Producer? I mean, I'm not going to hate on you because you honestly did get your money. You got your coin, girl. But at the same time, when you compare yourself to Oprah, clearly don't make the mistake because you're nobody's Oprah. You're not promoting black women being successful. You're not promoting black women being, black women being educated. You're promoting a bunch of junk food. So for you to sit back and get upset when the critics call your show messy and you're, you know, degrading black women, all those things that all the critics have been saying about you in the magazines, it's true. But if you want to be so bold how you supposedly are trying to be on your show, why not just accept the fact that you put out some mess, you put out a real show that's just plain junk food, that's just plain trashy, and accept the fact. I mean, I would respect you more if you say, yeah, girl, I got a real messy show I just put out. Y'all better tone into it. Not try to cover it up and say, I have a show that's going to show the lifestyle of basketball wives and African-American women how we so Girl, please. Girl, please. It was messy. Shawnee, you really did orchestrate a lot of the mess on the show. To you and Susie could have been best friends because you two started a lot of the issues on the show. But you being an executive producer, you had to give a social. I respect you for this for being a businesswoman. I do respect you. I may not respect that shoe line that's coming up because it may be a little bit messy, but I will respect you. Let's talk about some of the highlights on the show. Let's talk about the, the, the thing that just everybody's talking about, the drink thrown in the face. Now, when I first saw it, the way they edited it on TV... I felt sorry for Jen. I was like, oh my god, I can't believe this dude just threw. And to be honest, you could tell that he wanted to bust her upside the head with that glass because he didn't just throw the drink. He didn't just like swam it like that. He like took the glass and like tried to knock her teeth out of her mouth. Like he really could have hit her upside the head with the cheap margarita glass. So, oh my gosh. But once I saw what really played out, Jen brought that on herself. I'm not saying that he should have did that because he should... Well, you know what? He should have. Because if you had the galls and the balls to throw your glass at him and your drink, you have to understand that you're playing with a real dude. You're playing with a real hood guy. So if you're going to throw something at him, be prepared for the consequences. I mean, he's not going to be politically correct. He's not going to be cordial about things. He's going to hit you back. So when he threw the drink in your face, yes, girlfriend, you needed to be cooled down. I don't condone men hitting women, but at the same time, if you're going to hit, put yourself out there and hit, hit a man and throw something at a man, then you have to be, be prepared for him to throw something back at you. I mean, what? You, you, you put out, you put out what you, you get back what you put out, pretty much. Let's talk about the whole Chad and, and Evelyn. Did you really think you were going to last? I mean, Evelyn, you truly have some, you truly have so many insecurities that it shows so much on the show. Like, to me, you, baby, you need a hug, you need a friend, you need to talk to your daddy some more because you are a mess. You are internally broken. You are hurt inside. You remind me of the chick from the Adams family that was doing babysitting that was trying to find a man. What was her name? Miss Daddy! Deborah, you remind me of Debbie from the Adams family. You are truly broken inside. You need help because. Every time, do you really think that this relationship with Chad is going to work with, 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 with all your insecurities? You think that you trying to control this man's life is really going to keep him? Girl, please. What's another highlight from the Basketball Wives? Uh, oh, yeah, how can I forget? Mika and Tammy fighting? Oh, my God. Mika and Tammy. Now, you know what? <clears throat> I don't know what to say about that because... I don't know what to say whether she brought it on herself. I don't, I don't even know what to say. What do you guys think about that? Because I, I don't know. I'm just like so much at all how she pow hit her upside the head. I'm just lost on that. I think that Tammy needs self-control. Tammy really needs to evaluate herself. Like I said, she needs to really seek a counselor because if that's who you are off of the show, you really need help. The whole Basketball Wives situation to me in conclusion is... It's mindless entertainment. It, you can't learn anything from it. You can't take anything from it and actually apply it to your everyday life except if you want to learn how to cuss somebody. And use a non-factor chick. Use a non- That's what- 
what you are. Mm -hmm. Don't rip my Evelyn. Don't rip my Evelyn. Oh yeah, what's up with that? What's up with Evelyn and all of a sudden Evelyn and Tammy all of a sudden they get a sister girl, they best friends. That's funny to me. Tammy, you were just talking about her a few weeks ago. You were just reading her down her right. You wanted to sue her. You wanted to beat her face in at Dolce. It'll be called Tammy's in a minute. That's right. Nobody can even pronounce the name of this mess. But now all of you, you are sister girls now? Really? Let's talk about fashion of the basketball wives. Now, fashion, beauty, and hair, honey. Okay, first of all, I have to hop on this because this was such a mess to me when I saw it. Tammy, take that tacky wig off of your head. Tammy, really, girl? For that wig, girl, you know that was a mess. You played your character once again. See, I don't know if Tammy's doing these things because she's playing the character role of being this hood rat because she does it so well. But Tammy, that wig did not go with the outfit. It did not even go with the earrings because if you're going to do the big bulky earrings like that, then you don't want to do the bangs and the long hair, the, the I guess supposed to be like a body wave because it clearly covers the earrings. What Tammy should have done was something pulled back which would have highlighted her earrings and would have given her more of a more of a neck because we all know that neck represents beauty but Tammy you clearly didn't have a neck when you were on the show that wig drowned you that dress looked rather cheap it looked very tacky in my opinion but I, I didn't understand why, why you put I don't know who your stylist is but you need a new one let's talk about Shawnee Shawnee girlfriend you play the puppet master role very well and you can tell that the show is bringing in revenues and that you're getting a Coin because you look great. I thought that Shawnee hair was done by I love Shawnee's hair. I loved her dress. Shawnee was giving me very much so Carrie Hilson tease. Like I felt like it wasn't Shawnee, it was more of Carrie Hilson on the show. I have to say that she was done from head to toe. Also, big ups to red bottoms because honey, all the girls had on red bottoms this season. Like, what's up with that? Hello, sponsorships. So, let's talk about Evelyn. Evelyn. Evelyn looked like a video ho to me. Evelyn just looks cheap. I mean, Evelyn, like I said, Evelyn only looks good when she's crying to me. The dress looked very cheap. Her shoes didn't match her, the shoes did not go with the dress. The hair to me was very flat. I would have appreciated if she would have done much more of a, a curl type of style, something curly in her hair. More volume. She definitely needed more volume with her hair because to me, clearly, it wasn't there. I didn't like that straight. Um, She reminded me of some type of female that you would see like in the background in the bar scene bent over it like in a ludicrous or mystical video that's what she was giving me like I think that for her age she does a little bit too much she needs to class it up grace it up and clean up her mouth now on to Mika Mika I liked her hair I thought her hair was done nice I think Mika does great with her um her blowouts and her body wave that she did with her hair but I don't know if I was a fan of the dress because to me it I would have appreciated if she would have stood up or something so I could really get into the the dress and the structure of it. But I didn't like the I don't the the strap thing. But I don't know. I just didn't like the black dress. The color was great for you, but the black dress I don't know. The structure was just too weird for me. It, it should have been a little bit something more simple than that. Okay, with who else can I remember that had on? Because Royce, you know, Royce tried. You gotta give her a. a clap for that but Royce is just what she said on the show she's not a fashionista but girlfriend trust me you do get a coin yourself so you can't hire a stylist to make you look decent on the show Royce hair Royce to me is aka average like Royce is not going to be a fashionista and Royce is not going to be close to bum either she's just going to sit right there on the line so I she was okay. Her dress was okay. Like, her dress is something that you can just, like, pick up real quick. Like, girl, I'm on a run. I gotta go to my sister party tonight. I need a dress. So let's go to Forever 21 and get a dress real fast. That's what her appearance looked like to me. I have to say that... Who well, Jennifer. Now, Jennifer's always known for giving those fly earrings. And I always love Jennifer's hair because Jennifer's hair is on point every time. I love Jennifer's hair. I can't really remember her earrings. I think they were kind of chandelier style. But that was cute. If I can remember her dress, I think it was like a plum color, I believe. I did like her dress too. It was right. Jennifer always does it really cute with her style. She always brings it when it comes to image wise. She may just be as dumb as two bricks in a doorknob, but trust and believe when the girl's on point when it comes to her look. Now, when you talk about Susie, oh God, this stranger. Susie to me, did she have a pink? I can't really remember. I'm, I'm going off the thoughts of my head, girl. The thoughts go this in every way. 
Susie, Susie, Susie never has a lasting effect to me. Her hair was the same way as it, as it always been on the show. I think she needs more edginess to her. First of all, she really needs to shut her mouth, but see, that's going, that's all for the fashion topic. Susie's hair to me is just plain Jane flat. I think she needs to try to experiment with another style because I'm so sick of her doing this whole little thing to the side. Girlfriend, please. I mean, that's so 1998 Mariah Carey's second album. Hello. But the dress to me was average once a while. Once again, you can get that dress from Lucaya. You can also get that dress from your local town mall. It was just, it, it was cheap. She reigned cheap to me. But uh, other than that, I think the number one, the best part, the, who looked the best, of course, was the puppet master. It was it was Shawnee, because the dress was on, the hair was on, the makeup was on. Basketball wives, like I said, in itself, to each his own. I don't understand why women are fighting so hard to be a part of a, a, a circle. I'm so sick of hearing that word, circle, because... It's not like it's a Michelle Obama social club or it's not like it's some type of Elizabeth Taylor club where you're around elite, classy women because all of these, at the end of the, end of the day, they all display hood rat content. So I'm not understanding how people are just fighting so hard to be, the whole show was based around being a part of a clique, being a part of a circle. And I'm sitting there like, what? So I don't see the, I don't see it. What, what circle are you tr people trying to formulate? Because it's it's clearly not there. It's messy. You all are not representing women that any woman from the outside that has some sense would want to be a part of. Oprah would not want to be a part of anything you women are conducting. No one wants to be a part of the drama, the immature acts, the juvenile display of affection, of, of, of hate towards your sister. Nobody wants to be a part of anything like that. And I have to agree with what a lot of what Mika said. I think that Mika does have a lot of sense. She did go about her things the wrong way, but she does have a lot of sense as to what she said. Who would really want to be a part of a, of a circle like this? I like Mika, but then I just I understand that Mika did a lot of dumb things on the show, but you gotta forgive her. She lived as she learned. Move on. Don't keep milking it with the interviews about Tammy. Just move on. Start your thing. I think that you have a great mind and you know how to use it. But I'm just clearly gonna wait around for season two to see where this goes and see if actually Shawnee's gonna open her mouth. Because if you if you if you look at the show, Shawnee's not saying a word. She's just over there laughing with the host, which is totally just dry to me. He's so lame. What is, what is his name? John. John, you're you're whack. You're so lame. You're a bad host. I, I don't even understand why they have you up there in the first place. I'm waiting for Gloria to get on her show because I like Gloria from the last season too. Gloria was real, honey. Gloria didn't like Shawnee and Shawnee, she let Shawnee know I don't like you. It is what it is. Thank you, Gloria. I, I loved you. I can't wait to see what you do with Basketball Wives in L.A. But anyway, that's what I have to say about Basketball Wives. If you guys know any more incidents that you don't understand you want to talk about, talk about it in the comments because, girl, you know we can talk all day about this show. But anyway, this is Amor Jacob and I'm signing out of here. Bye.